Van Diathevan looked back. Guts spilled out of his stomach and clogged his chest. Then they moved further up and closed his throat. A thousand lightnings flashed in his body. A hundred thousand ripe needle points pierced his body, such a horrible sight was before his eyes. Ten, twenty, a hundred fireballs appeared here and there in the endless darkness. No smoke from them, there is no light, neither are the flames created by putting wood on the bottom. Just fireballs. They stood somehow rising from the earth. Suddenly some of them disappeared. A few other sparks rose anew. A colossal dark-hued giant, a single headless monster with a mouth deep in its belly. But not a mouth in his stomach, many mouths. He opened and closed those mouths often. Flames of fire came out of the belly through the mouths when it was opened. Disappeared on closing. Seeing this scene, Vandiyadeva's blood seemed to be oozing through every hair of his body. Such panic had never gripped him. Not even in the great scavenger's dungeon. Ha ha ha! Behind him. He looked back when he heard a laugh. It's a flower pot. On another occasion, her laughter would have terrified him beyond measure. Now that same smile gave courage. A woman of blood, flesh, body, life, standing by his side helped him like a crutch in great peril. Have you seen my lovers? Pungazali asked. These marauding devils are my lovers. I come to this place in the middle of the night just to chat with them, she said. There's no doubt that this girl is well-rounded. Is it possible to go to Sri Lanka with her help? Thus Vandiyathevan thought. Some other thought was struggling to emerge from his inner mind. What is that? Something about these marauding devils. Can your friend Sendanamudan compete with such lovers? Pungazali said it sounded like a voice coming from inside the well. Because his mind was trying to remember something. Cow. A great struggle at the end, within the mind. Here is the memory. If water stagnates in sulfurous earth for a long time and becomes swampy, such apparitions occur at night. When sulfurous gas comes out from inside the earth, it looks like a flame of fire. Sometimes lasting. Sometimes it appears as cup cup and disappears. Uninitiated people are frightened by this natural appearance. They will panic by giving the terrible name of the predatory devil. He had heard elders say this and remembered. Then there was a war between his knowledge and his fear. Knowledge prevailed. But it is no use telling this deluded girl all that now. Somehow he had to say a good word to her and take her away. Girl. Your lovers won't go anywhere. They'll be here. Come and see them tomorrow, won't you? Let's go home, come on. He said. Bungazali did not say anything in reply, Vimy started crying. What trouble is this? Vandiyathevan thought. Then he was idle for some time. Girl. Shall we go? He asked again. Wimmel did not stop. Vandiyathevan is fed up. Okay, do as you like. I'm sleepy. I'm going, he said, and began to descend. Bungazali immediately stopped them all. She started coming down from the hill. Nail jumped down and stood in front of Vandiyathevan. Vandiyathevan ran away and caught her. Both started walking towards the lighthouse. Trusting this crazy woman to get on a boat. Crossing the ocean? But it seems that there is no other way? Can we try to make friends by saying something nice? A comet appears in the sky. What do you think about it? Pungazali asked. My point is nothing. The comet appears, that's all. Vandiyathevan said. They say that if a comet appears in the sky, it will cause great harm to the earth. That's what some say. What are you saying? I've never studied astrology. All I know is what people say. They walked in silence for a while. Then Punguzali said, They say that the emperor is not well, is that true? She said. Vandiyadevan thought, She is not such a bad girl. Little faith was born in him. I have seen with my own eyes. The emperor lies bedridden. 
He has no feeling in either leg. He cannot take a single step. I have only come to bring him herbs to cure him. Lady! Will you do me a favor? He asked. Without answering, he said, they say that the emperor will not live long and will die soon. Is that true? Pung Huali asked. If you don't help now, it will happen. There is a rare healing herb in Sri Lanka. If you bring it, the emperor will survive. Will you push the boat and come to Sri Lanka? If the emperor dies, who will be next? Pungazali asked and Vandiyathevan was thrown away. Girl! What's that about me and you? Who cares who gets the title? Why don't you care? Aren't you and I citizens of this kingdom? This woman is not mad. Be careful with her. There must be another reason for her strange actions. Why aren't you talking? Who's coming to the next degree? Punguzali asked again. The title of Yuvaraja is tied to Adithakari Kalar. He should justly come to the next title. The drunkard has he no right. Is he the one who said he didn't want the kingdom? He said so before, now he wants the kingdom. Is it enough for him to say? Shouldn't all the citizens agree? Are there many great men in his party? That's what I heard, too. I'm very surprised to think that so much has reached your ears. What will happen if Sundara Chola dies suddenly? The whole country will be in chaos. Your help is needed now to prevent it. What can I do to help? I told you before. I have to go to the island of Sri Lanka to bring herbs urgently. You have to bring a boat for that. Why are you calling me? Aren't you ashamed to ask a girl to push a boat? Your father says there is no one else. Did your brother also leave yesterday? What if he goes away? Don't you have two hands, and the one who came with you doesn't have two hands? We don't know how to hurt a boat. What a magic trick the boat hurts. If you hold the oar and it hurts, the boat will go by itself. Don't you want to know your way? What if you are lost in the middle of the ocean? If you lose your way in the middle of the sea, drown. I'll do anything about it. They arrived near the lighthouse. Vandiyathevan also wanted to stop talking. And he did not want to confirm Pungazali's denial by developing the speech. Although she answered so firmly, her voice and manner of speaking had created a small flame of hope in his heart. After lying down for the second time, Devon did not get sleep after coming for a long time. His mind was very confused due to some thoughts. He fell asleep at the beginning of the fourth month. Vandiyadeva dreamed in his sleep. Punguzali and he were sitting opposite each other in a small boat with sails spread. The sea on all four sides, water everywhere. Pleasant Park the boat was moving like it was floating in the wind. Punghwali's face glowed beautifully. Curled hair was swaying on the forehead. The sari title flew. Vandiyathevan forgot where we were going and why we were going. It seemed that he had travelled all these days just to get on the boat with Bungazali. Only one thing was missing. What is that? What is that? Cow. The song of Punghwali. Santhanamuthan had said it. Woman! Won't you open your coral mouth and sing a song? Vandiyathevan said. What did you say? Punghuali asked with a smile. Aha! Won't the seven worlds get that smile? Won't you open your door and play a hymn, I said. What will you give me if I play the hymn? Come close to you and touch your beautiful cheek. Punghuali immediately took a sharp knife from her lap. She waved her hand holding the knife. Look. If you come an atom's length beyond that sail I will stab you with this knife. The fish of the sea are very hungry. She said.